So welcome to the afternoon session. So let me introduce Professor Tony Yu from University of Paris Sud. So he will talk about secondary fan and zeta function and modular space of Calabria pairs. Uh, thank you very much, Kyun Song, uh, for your introduction. It's my great honor to speak uh, at this conference, and I hope we can all meet in Miami in person uh, next year. So I have shared the notes of my talk in the chat. Let me just paste the link again, and uh, you, so that you can read back and forth during my talk. And also during my talk, please do not hesitate to interrupt me uh, to ask questions. You can just unmute yourself and interrupt, unmute and speak. The title of my talk is a secondary fan, theta functions and moduli of Calabria pairs. It's based on my joint work with uh, Paul Hacking and Sean Kiel. Here is the plan of my talk. Uh, first, I will introduce the moduli space of Calabria pairs. And then I will explain a generalization of the Gelfand Kapranov Zelewinski secondary fan. After that, I will uh, explain the construction of mirror algebra by accounts of non Archimedean analytic disks. So when we take a spec of this mirror algebra, we will get a an, an mirror family. And finally, we will glue the mirror families together over the secondary fan. So let's start with, uh, with the first, uh, an introduction to the moduli space of Calabria pairs. We propose the following conjecture regarding the moduli space of smooth polarized Calabria pairs. So we consider the moduli space of triples x e theta. Such triples are called uh, polarized Calabria pairs, uh, where x is a connected smooth projective complex variety. E um, is an anti lies in the anti-canonical class, is a normal crossing divisor with a zero stratum, and we assume every piece is smooth. And theta is an ample divisor not containing any zero stratum of E. So we consider such triples, they are called, uh, they are particular cases of uh, polarized Calabria pairs. Uh, I will recall all the basic notions from birational geometry in a moment. So we consider modular space of such triples, and we conjecture that any connected component Q of such modular space is unirational. So uh, in fact, we have a more precise form of the conjecture above for the compactified modular space. Um, in order to introduce the compactification uh, of the moduli space, let's first recall some basic notions from birational geometry. Um, first, it's just the basic notions from birational geometry. First, a pair x delta consists of a reduced pure dimensional variety x and an effective q divisor delta. And usually this is just what a pair means. Here we assume that none of whose irreducible components, none of the irreducible components of delta is contained in the singularity of x, uh, because we will also be considering reducible x. So we put this extra condition. Then a Kohler Shepard Baron Alexeyev stable pair, or KSBA stable pair for short, is a proper semi log canonical pair, x delta, uh, such that kx plus delta is ample. Here, semi log canonical is a condition on the singularities 
uh, which generalizes nodal curves to higher dimensions. So a uh, stable pair is just uh, a pair with uh, some uh, nice singularities such that uh, kx plus the boundary is ample. That's the stability condition, uh, which is just a generalization of a stable curve. Similarly, a Calabria pair is a proper semi-log canonical pair such that kx plus delta is zero. So finally, a polarized Calabria pair is a triple uh, x e theta, as we have seen a moment ago, uh, where x e is a Calabria pair, and the theta, the polarization, is an ample divisor not containing any SLC centers of x e. So recall, same as we have uh, here. Uh, that theta not containing any zero stratum, it's exactly uh, the, the special case uh, of the condition that not containing any SLC center. Um, in other words, we ask the pair x comma e plus a sufficiently small multiple of theta to be a stable pair. Okay, so it's just a recall of uh, basic notions from birational geometry. We have the notion of pair, a uh, stable pair, Calabria pair, and a polarized Calabria pair. So now uh, we see that for sufficiently small uh, epsilon, if we consider the pair uh, x comma uh, e plus sufficiently small multiple of theta. Uh, so this is a stable pair. And our moduli space Q, or moduli space of uh, such uh, triples, immerses into uh, the moduli space of stable pairs. And the moduli space of stable pairs, as I mentioned, stable pairs uh, is a generalization of uh, stable curves. It's just a higher dimensional generalization of stable curves. And this moduli space is a generalization of the Deling Manford uh, moduli space MGN bar of stable curves. So here uh, we see that our moduli space just uh, embeds. Uh, into that uh, SP. And this is very nice because uh, SP, the connected components of SP are proper. Uh, it's proven not so long ago by Alexiev, Haken, McKernan, and Xu. It's really analogous to this. Um, properness of uh, MGN bar. And if we take the closure of Q, um, Q bar, we take the closure inside this proper moduli space, we obtain a natural compactification, um, a natural compactification of our moduli space of um, these uh, triples, these polarized Calabria pairs. And now uh, we can state the precise form uh, of our conjecture. So just now it, I gave the, just a weak form says, saying that the moduli space is uh, unirational. But actually, uh, we conjecture that the compactification Q bar admits a finite cover by a complete toric variety, uh, T. So this is really motivated by uh, mirror symmetry since uh, it's uh, not at all obvious from the viewpoint of uh, birational geometry. In birational geometry, such moduli spaces, although we have uh, 
obtained many general results concerning such moduli spaces, but uh, it's very hard to study uh, particular examples of uh, such moduli space of stable pairs. And a priori, such moduli space has nothing to do with toric varieties. So motivated by mirror symmetry, we have this conjecture, and uh, we verified this conjecture in the two-dimensional case. So we prove that the conjecture holds when x is a del petal surface, um, E is a cycle of minus one curves, and the polarization theta is also anti-canonical. So if you have questions, please do not hesitate to uh, interrupt me. Okay. Um, yeah, so now let me explain, say something uh, first very quickly about the idea uh, for the proof not just for two-dimensional case, but also ideas for higher dimensional case. Um, the proof of the theorem is based on first, um, first a construction of the toric variety T. So we conjecture that the compactified moduli space admits a cover by a complete toric variety. So first, uh, we want to construct um, this toric variety, and uh, the proof. Uh, so, so first we construct this toric variety, and we use ideas from Mori theory and the Bayakovich geometry for the construction. And uh, once we have the toric variety, uh, we want to build a family of uh, such Calabria. We want to build a family of such uh, Calabria uh, pairs or a family of such triples in order to get a, a map uh, towards Q bar. So we want to have uh, the family over that. And uh, we will construct the family of triples X E theta as the proj of a sheaf of graded algebras with a canonical basis whose structure constants are given by counts of non-Archimedean analytic disks. And this construction generalizes uh, the mirror algebra construction that I did with Sean uh, before. Uh, excuse me, can I ask yeah. one question? Sure. Could you explain a little more detail what is the mirror? Why you have this conjecture from mirror symmetry? How you get this? Uh... Because uh, so the conjecture says that this compactified moduli space has uh, some uh, cover by a toric variety. In other words, we can construct a toric variety and also a family over that toric variety so that uh, uh, the toric variety maps. Uh, to Q, like uh, as a finite map to Q. Uh, 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 Tony, also I have a question. I, th I think we discussed it uh, some time ago. I, I had a doubt that this conjecture is true because in general for spectral sequences, it looks the dimension of universal model space is much larger than what you can expect by mirror symmetry. There should be some parasitic homology classes, not visible in dimension two. Yeah, in higher dimension, it seems that in the mixed Hodge structure, there are some parts that we discussed that uh, we don't yeah. know whether it vanishes or not. Yeah. But uh, but maybe they can vanish. I don't know. Yeah. In the for example, in dimension three, probably they vanish. Um, so uh, anyway, even if the conjecture doesn't hold, uh, some cases 
uh, of the conjecture should hold. Probably we need to add some assumptions. Um, so today I will be mainly talking about uh, some general constructions uh, in the direction of the conjecture, and uh, it it also has uh, independent interests. Um, yeah. So for uh, Kyung Song's uh, question, uh, in order to prove the conjecture, we want to construct a family over this torical variety, and that is uh, that construction we inspire is inspired by a uh, mirror symmetry construction so i will just explain yes um yes thank you thank you yeah no problem so uh yeah so okay so this is very uh, just uh, rough uh, points two points and now I let me explain a bit more uh, ideas. So first let me explain how we construct the toric variety. In other words, how we construct the fan uh, for the toric variety. So uh, for constructing the toric variety, we start with the mirror Calabria pair and we assume uh, the interior is smooth affine and the boundary is normal crossing. And let's also assume y to be final. We only, uh, let's just assume in this special case. And we let k be the canonical bundle and we consider k to k bar the contraction of the zero section. So, so our goal is to construct a fan for the toric variety and we construct a complete fan uh, sec k over k bar that is supported on the Picard, uh, Picard group of k over k bar which is just isomorphic to the Picard of y and we call it the secondary fan for yd. So, so in short, this secondary fan will just be uh, the fan for our toric variety t. It is called a secondary fan because it generalizes uh, the classical Gelfand Kapranov Zelewinski secondary fan for reflexive polytopes. And uh, the construction, very roughly, it is by construction a coarsening of the Mori fan for k over k bar. So here, uh, Mori fan is defined using so called Mori equivalence relation for divisors. I will recall it uh, in the moment. But here I'm just giving you a rough idea. Uh, we are constructing uh, this fan for the toric variety, uh, and we call it secondary fan. It turned out to be a generalization of the classical thing um, in the for polytops, and also and our construction uses uh, some. Uh, basic birational geometry of divisors. Okay, so, so as I said, uh, we conjecture that the toric variety associated to the secondary fan uh, should be the base toric variety for our family of Calabria pairs. So this is why uh, we uh, construct this secondary fan. Okay. So this is how we do the base. And now we have the base toric variety and we want to build, uh, now we want to build a family uh, over our base toric variety. So this construction, uh, we use mirror symmetry. Okay, 
So next, we need to build uh, the family of triples uh, or Calabria pairs, polarized Calabria pairs, X, E, theta, uh, over this toric variety. And we start with the affine mirror family uh, from the following Frobenius structure theorem. So, um, I explained this theorem in many different talks. Here, let me give a review. It's just the construction of uh, of uh, mirror family, a fine mirror family using some non-Archimedean geometry. So let me uh, recall or explain uh, what is the theorem. Um, first, we take care of all the curve classes since uh, in mirror symmetry, we always do uh, curve counts. And we take care of curve classes by uh, letting R be the monoid ring over the cone of curves. And then uh, we let A be the free R module with basis um, integer points with basis SKUZ, which is which denotes the set of integer points in the essential skeleton of U. So if you don't know what it is, uh, we have an explicit description. It's just a zero uh, union multiples of so-called uh, essential divisorial valuation on the field of rational functions on U. So uh, in other words, it's just a zero union a multiples of uh, divisors in, at infinity where uh, the volume form has a pole. So these are integer points in the essential skeleton. And uh, we have uh, some multilinear form, some non-degenerate -de multilinear form on A given by counts of rational curves in U uh, called the Frobenius form. And we prove that there exists a unique uh, algebra, finitely generated commutative associative algebra structure on A, compatible with the Frobenius form. So in short, uh, we just uh, construct an algebra structure on A. Uh, it is given by counts of non-Archimedean analytic disks uh, in, in U. So I will, if I, there is time in the end, I will say more details about, uh, I would have give you some pictures. But uh, here uh, you just, uh, I'm just uh, saying that uh, somehow using some enumerative geometry, we get an algebra structure on A. And uh, if we take a spec, uh, we get a family over the spec of R, uh, which we call the affine mirror family. And we prove that uh, it is a flat family of affine varieties of same dimension as U. And, and each fiber has uh, reasonable singularities, Gorenstein SLC, semi-canonical. Uh, trivial canonical class and the generic fiber is log canonical and log calabial. So uh, in other words, just log calabial with uh, some reasonable singularities. Um, yeah, so uh, in short, uh, I'm just saying that uh, we construct a mirror algebra A and we proved that When we take spec, we get uh, we get the mirror family of uh, log Calabria varieties, uh, the mirror family of affine log Calabria varieties uh, with some uh, reasonable singularities. So this is the starting point uh, of our of the construction uh, for the family over the toric, over the base toric variety. So here, uh, this family we have is just affine 
uh, also over an affine base, but uh, our goal is to get uh, really a family of uh, these Calabria pairs, which is a family of uh, projective varieties, and also over over a complete a projective base. So we want to compactify uh, first fiber wise. And then we also want to compactify the base. Yeah. So so for the so let's just uh, uh, observe that this uh, N E this cone of curves the dual of the cone of curves is the nef cone. So when we take a spec of uh, this, when we take a spec of uh, this monoid ring, it's just the toric variety associated to the nephcon. And now uh, here is the theorem for extending uh, our family and for compactifying our family. So theorem, uh, the affine mirror family B to uh, the toric variety associated to the nephcon in other words, to spec R, this is just the same as this. The affine mirror family from the Frobenius structure theorem compactifies and extends to a family of Calabria pairs, uh, X E, over the toric variety associated to the secondary fan. So this is uh, conjecturally uh, the toric variety that will map to our moduli space. Yeah, so so it, uh, in other words, we can fiberwise compactify and we can also extend to the uh, projective base. And moreover, we also have an, a polarization, an ample divisor theta such that uh, the generic fiber uh, is good. So such that the generic fiber x comma e plus a sufficiently small multiple of theta is a stable pair. In other words, uh, for the generic fiber, we get uh, we get a polarized Calabria pair. So the singularities are good. Um, yeah, so this is uh, all we can prove in this generality, and we conjecture the stability uh, to hold for all fibers, not just for gen generic fiber. We conjecture that the whole family should be, should have uh, a nice singularity. SLC singularity, so that the whole family uh, is a family of uh, Calabria pairs. But uh, currently, we can only prove it in dimension two. So uh, we conjecture it. This, I mean, this is actually a mirror symmetry uh, question: whether uh, the mirror we obtain has uh, good singularities. And uh, we prove that the mirror we obtain, uh, the generic fiber has uh, good singularities. And we conjecture that it should work for all fibers. But we can only do it in dimension two. Because in dimension two, we can make many things explicit um, and also use uh, uh, previous uh, calculations by gross hacking and Q. So in dimension two, we have very detailed uh, descriptions. Um, yeah, assume now assume Y to be a smooth del petal surface. So in the dimension two case, then uh, then we can show that the whole family is good, not just the generic fiber. So the whole family is a flat family of Calabria pairs. In other words, uh, uh, in other words, the singularities are good, and then the boundary 
of the family is just a trivial family of a cycle of rational curves. And we also have a very uh, nice description for all fibers over the structured torus. So our base is toric variety. Inside we have the open torus. Every, for every fiber over this uh, structured torus of the base toric variety, uh, X is a delpetal surface with at worst Duval singularities. Um, e is an anti-canonical cycle uh, of uh, minus one curves. And furthermore, we can compute the self-intersection number of uh, k. So we are interested in this because uh, by definition, the degree of a delpetal surface is just self-intersection number of uh, the canonical class. So we can compute the self-intersection number of uh, the degree of this um, uh, delpetal surface, and it's equal to the number of irreducible components of D. So we get an explicit uh, uh, description of all the fibers over the torus. They are really nice delpetal surface with the uh, Duval singularities. And, the and we also know the degree. And next, uh, when we add uh, this theta, uh, we get a family of stable pairs. When we add very small multiple of theta, we get a family of stable pairs. In other words, x e theta is a family of uh, uh, polarized Calabria pairs. And finally, we show that. So we have now we we managed to get a family of polarized Calabria pairs over this space uh, toric variety T v sec. And so we get a map, induced map, from this toric variety to this moduli space SP, the moduli space of stable pairs. And we show that this map is finite. So in other words, uh, our family is almost a universal family. Um, yeah, so this is the explicit, uh, ver uh, I mean, very detailed description of the family in the two-dimensional case. We hope we can also do it in higher dimensions, but uh, the control of singularities became much more complicated uh, in higher dimensions. If, you can, if we can have that in higher dimensions, uh, it will be really nice. So corollary of this uh, detailed description is that uh, if uh, y is a uh, delpetal and d is an anti-canonical cycle of minus one curves, um, then the generic fiber of the mirror family is smooth. Uh, in general, the generic here in general the generic fiber may always have uh, Duval singularities, but if d consists of just minus one curves, then the generic fiber is actually smooth, and the one fiber is the original yd. Uh, therefore, we see that the image of this finite map we considered here from this uh, toric variety associated to the secondary fan to the moduli space sp of stable pairs is just uh, the compactified moduli space. So it's just the closure for the moduli space q of triples uh, for the original yd that we considered in the very beginning of the talk. 
So in this way, we verify our conjecture in dimension two. Yeah, so uh, this is just an overview of, uh, of the ideas uh, in the construction, uh, why we use mirror symmetry and uh, um, a summary of what we do. Yeah, so uh, if you don't have questions, let me just uh, mm, continue to the second part. Uh, so now let me give more details about our generalization of the Gale van der Kaplan of the Lewinsky secondary fan. Um, we hope that in, it should also have independent interests, uh, this generalization. Uh, independent of our conjecture or of mirror symmetry. So here is our setup. We have V, some smooth log color beyond, and K, uh, some partial compactification. Furthermore, uh, we fix some regular proper map Q from K to K bar. And we assume that K over K bar is a relative Mori dream space. I will explain this terminology uh, in birational geometry in a moment. And this is the general setup. And in our application, uh, we apply to the mirror funnel, mirror pair YD, and the U is the interior. So we take a K, this K here uh, will be the canonical bundle over Y. And this V, this log Calabria V will be uh, K minus Y restricted to U. And this Q will be contraction of the zero section. So you may ask why uh, we do this. It feels a bit complicated take canonical bundle, take this inside. Instead of considering this Calabria, we take canonical bundle and we take the Calabria V. And then we also contract the zero section. So the reason is that we want to generalize the Gelfand Capron of the, the, this GKZ secondary fan. Only when we do that, uh, we get the correct secondary fan. Okay. Um, so yeah, so now let me explain, uh, recall something from birational geometry. Um, uh, so the idea of uh, Mori dream space is a projective variety such that the Mori equivalence I will also recall that, such that the Mori equivalence of line bundles give, gives rise to a finite polyhedral fan, a Mori fan, supported on the effective cone uh, in the Picard uh, vector space. So in general, uh, Mori Equivalence relate this equivalence relation on line bundles just gives a very complicated uh, equivalence relation on on the Picard group, but Mori dream space is the nicest situation where the equivalence relation uh, gives some polyhedral fan structure. So as a consequence. Mori's minimal model program becomes particularly simple for Mori dream spaces. And as I promised, let me recall also what is Mori equivalence. Um, when we have a line bundle, uh, we can consider its section ring, which is just a direct sum of uh, sections of uh, multiples of the line bundle. 
when the section ring is finitely generated, uh, we get a birational contraction from the variety to the approach of the section ring. And the two line bundles with finitely generated section rings are called Mori equivalent if they give rise to the same birational contractions and also if they have the same stable base divisors. Um, this is the definition of uh, um, of uh, Mori equivalence. Yeah. So, uh, so an easy consequence of the Mori uh, dream space is that each maximal cone of the Mori fan is of the form uh, pullback of nef cone of uh, some x prime plus the sub cone spanned by exceptional divisors for uh, any birational contraction x to x prime. This is what uh, uh, cones in Mori fan look like. Maximal cones because just follows from the definition. Uh, we fix a birational contraction and uh, we add up uh, the pullback of all the left divisors there plus uh, these uh, exceptional divisors. Okay, and uh, we introduce a notation move fan, which is the restriction of the Mori fan to the moving cone inside the effective cone. Uh, consisting of moving divisors, in other words, divisors without stable base components. Uh, then the maximal cones of the moving part of the Mori fan uh, is just uh, uh, this, this, this part, pullback of uh, nef x prime, for any uh, small modification. Um, Let's ignore this technical condition factorial. So for any small modification, um, it just follows from there because if it's moving, then we don't have that part. We don't have the exceptional divisors. And also the birational contraction is just a small uh, birational map. And we call the other cones uh, bogus cones. So I hope you uh, are not overwhelmed by the review of birational geometry. Mm. Anyway, uh, let us just observe that in the toric case, so the reason I do the review of birational geometry is just to say that uh, in the toric case, when we consider the Mori fan uh, for k over k bar, it's isomorphic to the classical GKZ secondary fan. So GKZ secondary fan is uh, defined completely in terms of combinatorics, like uh, uh, fine functions. So, and here we get uh, an interpretation of the combinatorics uh, via the birational, it's easy birational geometry that I record. So, so this is uh, this fan, this is a nice fan, and uh, uh, we can take the associated toric variety. But uh, the story is not uh, that easy because uh, this associated toric variety uh, in general is not the right base for extending the mirror family. Uh, because uh, the induced map to the moduli space of uh, stable pairs will not be finite. We will we can have a family, but it's not good enough. There are some redundancies uh, inside the family. So, yeah. So now, uh, we would like to contract uh, 
yeah, the redundancy, it turned out that the redundancies are uh, just over some strata, toric strata of this toric variety. So we want to contract uh, the strata of the associated toric variety on which uh, the mirror family is trivial. And it's a miracle that once these stratas, these strata are contracted, um, we get almost a universe, like a universal family. Okay, so, so if you remember from toric geometry, uh, when we blow up, blow up, toric blow up corresponds to a refinement of a fan, and here contraction of strata will correspond to coarsening of fan. And our idea for constructing the coarsening uh, is to use the uh, Bayakovich geometry, non Archimedean geometry, and we will coarsen. Uh, causing this Mori fan to uh, sec k, uh, which we call secondary fan. It turned out that in the toric case, we don't coarsen. In the toric case, they are the same. So now uh, let me say something about uh, how Bayakovich geometry is used uh, for the coarsening. Um, for this, we consider the universal torsor G over K and uh, uh, the restriction of G of the universal torsor to V is again log Calabi Yau. And now we apply uh, non Archimedean geometry. Here, nothing is non Archimedean yet, but we just put a trivial valuation over, over the base field. So, until now, we are we have been working over the complex numbers, but uh, let's still continue working with complex numbers. But we will now consider complex numbers as a non-Archimedean field uh, by throwing away the usual complex norm and we replace it by the trivial uh, norm, which. Uh, takes all non-zero complex number to one and it takes zero to zero. So this is a non-Archimedean, then any complex variety becomes a non-Archimedean space and uh, we have, uh, we can consider non-Archimedean geometry. So uh, in particular, uh, we get a map of essential skeletons, which is really a uh, great feature of Bayakovich geometry, uh, canonical subsets of Bayakovich geometry, and it, it originally proposed by Kondasevich and the Soboman. Um, so the map from T to V induces a map of essential skeletons. And uh, I will explain in a moment that this map between essential skeletons admits a canonical section phi. just uh, always canonical. Uh, then, so then we, we will construct our coarsening using this phi. So uh, coarsening means we glue some cones together. We, we just uh, glue some cones together. That's what coarsening means. Refinement is we uh, split cones and the coarsening is we glue. So we glue maximum cones of the moving part of uh, the Mori fan for which uh, the associated phi coincide. We just, uh, so now for each maximum cone, we have a phi, the, the canonical section, and uh, we just uh, glue things together when the phi are the same. And then this also induces a gluing of uh, the part outside the moving part. 
And this gives us the coarsening we want, which we call the secondary fan. So, yeah, so really all the uh, mystery is uh, about this canonical section, phi. Um, uh, actually, so now let me say something about the construction of this canonical section phi. So actually, uh, the construction works uh, in great, greater generality. It works for all formal schemes locally of finite presentation uh, over the ring of integers of some non Archimedean field. And for any flat subjective map with geometrically integral fibers. So in this generality, we claim that we always have a canonical section phi uh, of the induced map between the generic fibers. It's just a simple construction in non-Archimedean geometry that we uh, I skip. Um, so, so we went, but uh, although we say non-Archimedean, in our situation, non-Archimedean is uh, really trivial. It's for complex numbers. So, so in the when k has trivial valuation, when we apply, we get uh, a canonical section phi that we want. There is some um, uh, small subtlety about analytification and this uh, bet space when uh, we work with non-proper varieties. But you can ignore this for the moment. Okay, so yeah, so uh, so now let's compare when we change the when we change cones. So remember that uh, cones of the Mori fan corresponds to these small modifications. So when we change cones, let's compare the section phi. Um, so recall, we have the universal tosser, which induces a map between the essential skeletons. And uh, we take some extra care since things are not uh, projective, not always projective. And we have this canonical section as above very general uh, non-Archimedean construction. And if we have some small modification, then uh, we have uh, we do the same thing. And uh, since the volume forms agree, whatever modification we do, uh, we can identify everything. Uh, except the section phi. So, so when we take different small modification, the section may change. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, really uh, something happened uh, here. So we prove that uh, actually now we can use this phi, information of phi to glue. So we prove that the gluing of maximum cones of the moving part of the Mori fan with given phi gives rise to a convex cone. Mm, this is uh, something uh, one must check. A priori, when we glue, it can be arbitrary. And the next, uh, next we show that it also behaves nicely uh, outside the moving part. So, in short, uh, in short, we can just glue, uh, glue cones of our uh, Mori fan using this section phi. And uh, we can prove that when we glue using the section phi, using the, the phi's to identify things to glue, uh, we get a rational polyhedral fan.
Yeah, so this is how uh, we generalize the construction of a GKZ, a secondary fan, in the classical toric case. So as we conjecture that uh, when now when we take toric variety associated to the secondary fan, it will be, we will use it as the base for our family of polarized Calabial pairs. And so, and this family, uh, we will construct it as an extension of uh, the mirror algebra construction uh, I did with Sean Keel um, before. So in the remaining few minutes, I just uh, say a few words quickly about how do we build the family. Mm. So as I mentioned, first we build the affine part of the family. First we build uh, the affine part, which is just a spec of some algebra. And uh, we want to construct, in other words, we want to construct uh, the structure constants for the mirror algebra. So I explained this story in many other uh, talks. Uh, the idea is inspired by Kondasevich homological mirror symmetry. Um, we would like to define the structure constants as counts of holomorphic disks. But uh, disks do not make sense in algebraic geometry, so we go to analytic geometry. And uh, in complex geometry, it doesn't really work for obtaining these numbers. Uh, we don't get well-defined numbers in complex geometry. And our solution is to use uh, non-Archimedean geometry and then we actually have a very simple and direct definition of the structure constants, chi, uh, by counting non-Archimedean curves instead of, uh, uh, instead of complex holomorphic curves. So let, I don't say what, uh, what we count, I just show this picture. Um, the structure constants uh, will be the number of non-Archimedean disks uh, satisfying this list of properties, uh, which looks like the shown in this heuristic picture. So we count these curves and we build uh, the mirror algebra. When we take spec, uh, we get the affine mirror family. Mm. Yeah, so this theorem just says that when we count, we actually get an algebra and uh, we get the mirror algebra. So uh, in finally, when we have this affine family, we want to uh, it's we want to go from the affine family to the family of uh, polarized Calabial pairs. In other words, we want to first compactify fiber wise compactify our affine family and then extend it over the uh, over the projective base, extend it over the base, which is the toric variety associated to the secondary fan. So uh, I just say that we do it in four steps. Um, in, in the first step, we study uh, the mirror algebra uh, associated to small modifications. And in this way, we obtain some fiber-wise compactification. And in the second step, we rephrase the mirror algebra using the universal tosser. Uh, in the third step, we can use this universal tosser to extend over the moving part of the secondary fan. And eventually, we extend uh, to the full secondary fan using some equivariant boundary torus action. 
Mm, okay. So uh, that's all what I want to explain in this talk. And thank you very much for your attention. Very much. So is there any question or comment? I, I had a question. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, so with the uh, with this secondary fan, is this you said it was not generally projective, or is it, is it realized as is there some polytope uh, for which this is the normal fan of? So here, uh, what we did is a generalization of the classical secondary fan for polytopes. So it, it's no longer the it includes the secondary fan for polytopes as a special case. But it is just a complete uh, fan. So there's not, so it's not generally projective. It's a complete. This fan is always complete. But is it project? Is the variety associated to it projective? And the associated variety. Let me think. I mean, is it do is it normal a normal fan to a polytope, for example? I see what you are. Uh, yeah, now I see what you're asking. Um, I, it's not so obvious to me. It's a complete, so we get a proper variety. Whether it's a projective, um, it, we we constructed just by gluing these cones. And the question is whether we have some convex function, strictly convex function there. Um, not so obvious that I can answer, but probably it is true. I will think about it, and if I have an answer, I will send you an email. Thank you very much for this interesting question. Thanks. OK, any other question? Yeah, may I ask you one question? So, uh, sure. Yeah, so in your original modular problem, for example, so the theorem you mentioned, you consider the Delphage surface with this uh, data. But in, if we go to, if we, when you compactify your modular space and you, I, you already, yeah, compactify this one, but then can you have a modular description of this boundary? The boundary E. So in our thing, we it's a triple. Uh, this uh, what was it? Maybe in the beginning, let's just go here. So what we are considering are triple x, e, and theta. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, when you compactify this Q, so when we know what's ah. happening in moduli yeah. yeah. And this e. When we compactify, this E usually does not change. It's uh, uh, it's still the boundary. It uh, doesn't break. E is already broken. And yeah. uh, in the compactification, uh, the variety uh, gets broken. The only variety broken, right? Because E was E is already broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, you I see. can just think E as uh, uh, E as uh, like for example in the two dimensional case E is just a cycle of rational curves. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. did I draw a picture somewhere or maybe not? So let let me just draw a picture. Mm, here. Maybe, uh, somewhere. Let me draw it uh, here. Uh, if uh, yeah, I think it works. So let's consider, for example, if this is uh, x and the e is uh, e is a cycle of p one yeah, yeah, yeah. like this. This is e. Mm, e and uh, e is like this. So, uh, so when we in the boundary of the modular space, 
when we degenerate x, x can break into many pieces, just as in the story of stable curves. But uh, e stays the same. So when x breaks, it breaks like uh, into something like this. It breaks like this. It's an, in our paper, we call it an umbrella when it breaks. And uh, E just become a divisor on every irreducible component of the broken X. Oh, I see. I see. Yes. So for example, we had an explicit, uh, I mentioned, we had an explicit description when uh, in the two dimensional case that uh, yeah, so the E doesn't change. For example, here uh, we show that uh, we show that uh, this family of boundary E is a trivial family over the whole base. So E doesn't change. When we degenerate X, X gets broken, but E is already broken. It's just pieces on x thank you and it, it it is a i mean maybe it's a stupid question but it, so can you also do you think it's also possible to say similar thing for weak derpezo surfaces for weak derpezo surfaces what does the weak derpezo mean uh, it's minus ky is an f and b ah minus no. k uh, to be nef and the big uh yeah. let me think so where we used uh, this um m -ponis. Mm. so really i mean in our construction of this um, secondary fan we always assumed that it's final um if we yeah, one reason we assume that it's final is because we want this Mori dream space to work. Yeah. And in the final case, we know that uh, they they have this polyhedral structure of uh, uh, for this Mori equivalence. Uh, but we could have those are always final. I always want Mori dream, so. Uh, you mean weak weak del petals? They are not final, right? They are Mori dream. I mean, they but are not final. Uh, you say that they are Mori dream space. Yeah, yeah. I see. So so then I think our thing can work. We assume the final just for this Mori dream space, so that we can refer to the paper by BCHM, uh, which shows that finals are Mori dream space. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see. Other than that, I don't think we use that uh, final. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so for I guess it should also work. This is a very good point. I see. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for your comment. Thank you. Thank you. So, are there any other question? Okay, if not, let's thanks to speak again, you Tony again. So thank you very much. Thank for you very that. much for your attention. So we will resume in 20 minutes. Yeah, uh, 2.30 in my time. Thank you.